Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video we are going to solve the 37th question from CBSE class 10 2023-24 sample question paper set 2 for mathematics standard with subject code 041 section E which is case study based questions where each question is of 4 marks. Now this question is from the arithmetic progressions chapter. A school auditorium has to be constructed with a capacity of 2000 people. The chairs in the auditorium are arranged in a concave shape facing towards the stage in such a way that each succeeding row has 5 seats more than the previous one. If the first row has 15 seats, then how many seats will be there in the 12th row? So let us understand the question first. Now here they have given us a picture of an auditorium and they say that maximum of 2000 people can accommodate inside this auditorium. And the chairs are arranged in rows in such a way that each succeeding row has 5 more chairs than the previous one. So here you can see in the picture there are 7 chairs in the first row. Whereas in the second row there are 12 chairs which is 5 more than the previous row and so on. Now the first sub question says if first row is having 15 seats or 15 chairs how many seats will be there in the 12th row. So here we are going to make use of the nth term of an AP formula which is a n is equal to a plus n minus 1 times d. A n represents the nth term of the sequence. A represents first term of the sequence. And d is the common difference. And n represents the row number. Now here in this question, the first term of the sequence is going to be 15. Now the common difference is going to be 5 because here they have mentioned that each row has 5 more seats than the previous one. Now n is the row number. Since here 12th row is asked, we will take the row number as 12. Now let us substitute the values in this equation. So we get a 12 is equal to 15 plus 12 minus 1 times 5. Now simplifying this we get 15 plus 12 minus 1 gives us 11 times 5. Now let us further simplify this and we get 15 plus 11 times 5 is 55 and adding these two is 70. So in the 12th row we have total of 70 seats. Now let us move on to the second sub question. If there are 15 rows in the auditorium, then how many seats will be there in the middle row? So imagine that there are 15 rows and we have to find out how many seats are there in the middle row. Now the first step is to find out what number represents the middle row. So let me write the numbers here first. So here I have written all the 15 rows. And to find out which is the middle row, let us see if 8 is our middle row. Now there are 7 numbers below 8 and there are 7 numbers above 8. Which means 8 is our middle row. So this is one way of finding which is the middle row. Or the second method could be take 15 and divide it by 2. So you get it as 7.5. So we are going to take it or round it off to the next higher number which is 8. So either of the two methods you can use to find out which is the middle row. Now since we got to know that the middle row or n is going to be 8 over here, let us use the nth term of an AP formula again. So a n is equal to a plus n minus 1 times d. So we have to find out how many seats are there in the middle row. So a n needs to be found out here. a which is the first term of the sequence and in part 1 of this question they had mentioned that in the first row there were 15 seats. So a is taken as 15. Common difference is 5. And n, which is the middle row, is 8. Now let us substitute the values in this formula. So a8 is equal to 15 plus 8 minus 1 times 5. And simplifying this, we get 15 plus 8 minus 1 is 7 times 5. So 15 plus 7 times 5 is 35. So adding these two numbers, we get the total number of seats in the middle row as 50. Let us move on to the third sub question. If total 1875 guests were there in the auditorium for a particular event, then how many rows will be needed to make all of them sit? Now looking at the question, we can say that we have to make use of the sum of the n terms of an AP formula. Because here total is mentioned and we have to find out what is the value of n, that is how many rows will be needed. So let me begin by writing the formula first. Now Sn that is the total number of guests are given as 1875. A that is first term of the sequence we know that it is 15. Common difference is going to be 5. Now let us substitute all these values in the formula. 
so 1875 is equal to n over 2 times 2 times 15 plus n minus 1 times 5. Now let us take 2 on the other side of the equal to sign. So it multiplies with this number and further simplify this equation. So 1875 times 2 gives us 3750 is equal to n times 2 times 15 is 30 plus now 5 multiplies with this bracket. That is 5 times n gives us plus 5n and 5 times negative 1 gives us negative 5. Now 30 and 5 are like numbers. So 30 minus 5 gives us 25 plus 5n. So when opening up the brackets n multiplies with the 25. So we get 25n plus n multiplies with 5n giving us 5n square. Now here each number is divisible by 5. So let us divide each of them by 5. Now 3750 divided by 5 gives us 750 and 25n over 5 gives us 5n plus 5n square over 5 gives us n square. Now n square and 5n stays the same. Now taking 750 on the other side of the equal to sign we get it as minus 750 equal to 0. The next step is to factorize this equation. So we have to find out the factors of 750 which when added or subtracted gives us 5n. So the factors are going to be 30n and minus 25n. So when we multiply these two we get minus 750 and when we add them we get plus 5n. So let us split up the 5n and write it in terms of the factors. So n square plus 5n is split up as plus 30n minus 25n minus 750 equal to 0. Now let us group them together that is grouping first two terms and grouping the last two terms. We are going to take the common ones out. So n is a common term from the first two. So n and in the bracket stays n plus 30. And from the last two terms, minus 25 is a common term. So minus 25 is taken out and in the bracket stays n plus 30 equal to 0. Now n plus 30 and n plus 30 is again a common term. So taking them out, we get a factor as n plus 30. And the second factor is going to be n minus 25 equal to 0. Now equating each factor equal to 0, we get n plus 30 equal to 0 and n minus 25 equal to 0. So n will be equal to minus 30 over here or n will be equal to plus 25. Now n represents the number of rows, so it cannot be negative. So we are going to discard this value and consider n equal to 25 as our answer. So the total number of rows required to accommodate 1875 guests is 25. Now let us move on to the OR question. If total 1250 guests were there in the auditorium for a particular event, then how many rows will be left blank out of the total 30 rows? Now this question is very much similar to the previous one which we did because the total number of guests are given and we have to find out how many rows were left blank out. So there will be only a little difference in the last few steps. So let us begin by writing the formula for sum of n terms of an AP. So Sn is equal to n over 2 times 2a plus n minus 1 times d. Now Sn is changed in this case. It is going to be 1250. A stays the same which is 15 and common difference is going to be 5. Now let us substitute these values in this formula. So 1250 is equal to n over 2 times 2 times 15 plus n minus 1 times 5. Now taking 2 on the other side of the equal to sign, it multiplies with 1250 and it gives us 2500 is equal to n times 2 times 15 is 30 plus now again 5 multiplies with the bracket. So 5 multiplies with n giving us 5n and 5 multiplies with negative 1 giving us negative 5. Now further simplifying this, we get 2500 is equal to n times 30 and 5 are like terms, so they subtract. So 30 minus 5, we get 25 plus 5n. Now n multiplies with the bracket, so we get 2500 is equal to n multiplies with 5n giving us 5n square plus n times 25 is 25n. Now again, the left hand side and the right hand side terms are divisible by 5. So we will divide each term by 5. So 2500 over 5 will give us 500. 5n square over 5 gives us n square and 25n over 5 gives us 5n. So n square and 5n will keep the same 
and taking the 500 on the other side of the equal to sign it turns out to be minus 500 equal to 0. Next we have to factorize it as we had done in the previous question. So we have to find out the factors of negative 500 which when added or subtracted gives us phi n. So the two factors of negative 500 could be 25 and negative 20. Because when you multiply these two you get negative 500 and when you add them together you get plus phi n. So let us break down the plus phi n in terms of its factors. So we have n square and plus phi n becomes plus 25 n minus 20 n minus 500 equal to 0. Now let us group the first two terms and the last two terms together and taking out the common terms from the first two we get the common term as n. So n and inside the bracket we have n plus 25 and from the next two terms we have minus 20 as a common term. So minus 20 and in the bracket we get n plus 25 equal to 0. Now again n plus 25 and n plus 25 is a common term. So we will take it as a factor that is n plus 25 and our second factor is going to be n minus 20 equal to 0. Now independently equating each factor equal to 0 we get n minus 20 equal to 0 and n plus 25 equal to 0. So here we have the value of n as negative 20 goes on the other side and we get positive 20 and here in the second case we get the value of n as minus 25 and we know that the number of seats cannot be negative so n is equal to minus 25 is discarded and the number of rows occupied by the guest here is 20. Now the question is to find out the number of rows which are left blank after the guests have occupied their rows. So the total number of rows are 30 and out of that 20 are being occupied. So the total number of rows which are left blank are going to be 30 minus 20. So let us write here number of rows left unoccupied or left blank is equal to total number of rows minus number of rows occupied. So total number of rows was given in the question as 30 and we got the number of rows occupied as 20. So 30 minus 20 gives us 10. So there are 10 rows in total which are unoccupied by the guests. I hope you have understood all the steps and liked the video. If you know any other way of solving this example do comment below. And if you are liking my videos like share and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching.